It was a dark and dreary Thursday morning in 2023 when the website Stack Overflow was mysteriously down for maintenance. This happened to be one of the few times of the year that I needed to go to the filthiest place on the internet, Stack Overflow, to find some answers because this was one of the few times of the year where I needed to write a bash script. And I don't care who you are, but if you say you can write a bash script without using Google, you're a filthy liar. Nonetheless, the imposter syndrome was running strong with me that morning. I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of all of my coworkers, and so I did the one thing I swore I would never do, and that was use ChatGPT to help me do my job. So, join me as I reenact exactly what happened and how ChatGPT took my job. How do I use ADB to uninstall an Android application. This was because I needed to uninstall an Android application from a CI task and it may or may not actually be installed. So this was just sort of the start. I wanted to make sure that I knew how to uninstall a package correctly. So cool, looks like ADB devices. Let's go ahead and just try this out. So ADB devices, uh oh, okay. So there's no ADB command found. How do I install ADB? It's probably installed. I have Android Studio installed, but you have to do some aliasing and stuff, and I'm not using ADB that often. Okay, how do I do it with Homebrew? Because I'm lazy, I, I don't really have time for it. Um, I can barely write a bash script, so give, give, me, give me some slack. So brew install Android platform tools. That was the wrong window. That is the right window. Okay, cool, so it's installed now. What was that command to uninstall the thing? Mm, okay, cool, so it's adb uninstall package name. Which, okay, I think that looks correct and I'm lazy. I don't want to uninstall the package yet because then that means I have to reinstall it later. So let's just cut to the chase, okay? How do I write a bash? script that only uninstalls the application if the application exists. So again, the issue that I ran into was really there's a CI server, we cache our emulators, but sometimes the cache can't be restored, so we rebuild the emulator from scratch, and in that case, there's no app to uninstall, but if I try to uninstall the app that doesn't exist, it will crash the CI server and then it won't cache the emulator and then it just creates this really bad loop. Really what I want to do is only uninstall it if it doesn't exist or if it does exist rather. That was my original problem and for that I need a bash script. Okay so specify the package name which is okay and granted I could not write this bash script myself but I I can read it. This looks right. I mean if if it shows up when we list all the packages, and then we know it's there, and then we can uninstall it. What I don't like though is this package name. That's kind of amateur hour. Like you don't want to hard code this. I might want to change this package from time to time. So how would I write that script allowing others to pass in the package name as an argument? Simple enough, right? And yes, I mean, it looks correct, but really, my other problem while I was testing this on the CI server was we end up installing two applications. We'll install the test binary that runs all of the test commands, then we'll install the application that's actually being tested. So uninstalling one application isn't enough and I don't wanna run the script twice. So how can I pass in multiple packages? Okay, so it gives me this bin bash and then it looks like I can run that. Okay, this is finally something where I feel comfortable enough to go, this seems like it's gonna work. So let's get, get to copying and pasting. Over here, you can see my lovely test application and I'm just gonna create a new folder, probably call it scripts, sure, why not? And then for that, we will create a new file and we will call this uninstall applications.sh. Sure, why not add it, copying and paste it. 
and then if I open the correct terminal window again and then zoom way in because you probably want to be able to actually read this if you're on a phone or something like that. So let's go ahead and let's run this application. So, and I think this is in my scripts folder actually, so I should probably run it from there, .sh, and then com. I don't know, poop. Oh, it's applications, plural. Oh, permission denied. So I'm pretty sure I just need to update some, oh no, actually it tells me right here to make it executable, just do, do that before running it. I just gotta read a little bit. Now if I go ahead and rerun it, lets me know that com poop is not installed. So we know that that part works. If it's not there, just lets me know, hey, it wasn't installed. So cool, we're not gonna get an error for that. It's been a while since I used this application, so I can't quite remember what the package name is. So I'm just gonna figure that out real quick. There we go dev multidex.android. So we are going to go ahead and uninstall it now and just make sure that it works. And we can see it's uninstalling, success, and uninstallation was complete. If I try to rerun it, I can see it's not installed. And I can see over here on my phone, also not installed. And so not only did ChatGPT help me write a bash script, actually, let me get this microphone out of the way. I actually didn't need to do anything other than copy, paste, and verify that what it was giving me was the correct thing. I was even able to take this through multiple iterations in a matter of minutes. Now, if I did this with Stack Overflow, this probably would have taken me 15 to 30 minutes to complete because I would have had to figure out one, how do I do the ADB command? Well, not really, the ADB command I knew how to do. Two, how do I write the bash script? How do I figure out how to only know if an application is installed and then uninstall it? But then also like, how do you handle multiple arguments in a way that makes sense? Again, that's not terribly difficult, but I would probably just reference a Stack Overflow post anyway. So at that point, I'm already looking at probably three different posts on Stack Overflow, hoping that the first one is actually the one that I was looking for. Sometimes it's not, so maybe say like five to six different articles of reading through and then trial and error and then piecing things together. Or just use ChatGPT, ask it the question and then build up and kind of see what it's going to give you and figure out is this going to work or not. Granted, I am a software engineer and I've been working on applications since around 2011, professionally since 2013 is when I started getting paid for this. So I have a pretty good idea of what looks right, what doesn't look right, and I also know what sorts of things I should ask ChatGPT to get the right response. And in fact, I was able to do that. I was able to tell it, hey, actually, I don't want to install ADB that way or configure it that way. I just want to do it through Homebrew. And it was able to go, oh, cool. No problem at all, sir. Let me get that for you. We are at an inflection point in history where AI is good enough to start doing our jobs which isn't something I thought was going to happen anytime soon. And sure, this example is, you know, me using ChatGPT as a software engineer, but I've been using ChatGPT for several months now to do other things for me. I've been using it to help write YouTube descriptions that are search optimized because I hate writing descriptions for YouTube and truthfully, no one reads them anyway. So you may as well just try to make them more optimized for search and targeting so it'll get the video will get recommended. I've even used it to write pull requests for me. When the pull request is very small and boring, I'll have it write a poem for the people that are reviewing it. That way, you know, if they want to read it, they get a good little chuckle. If they don't, I only wasted like five seconds of my life. So not a big deal. I also used Midjourney to help me create the thumbnail for this video. It didn't create the entire thumbnail because it's still pretty stupid um, and it just doesn't really know what you're looking for, but it will be able to create general prompts. So the you know robot that you saw, that was created by it. The background that you saw, that was created by it. And then really I just pieced those together, added a little bit of extra flair, and that was the thumbnail. And I've also been using ChatGPT to write social media posts for me. Now I edit them and modify them, but it helps me really figure out like, hey, I just wanna write all these posts all at once. I can go through, I can edit them, I can check them, make sure they look good. 
but that's another huge thing. The common point is that ChatGPT and other AI tools help me when I don't have the energy to do the work, but I need to still do the work. To get a little bit personal, I've long struggled with depression and some days I have a ton of energy and I can do a lot of stuff. Other days I have about enough energy to maybe make it to the couch and binge watch YouTube all day. Having an AI tool that can do a lot of the general creative stuff for me when I don't have that energy helps me stay a little bit more consistent and then I'm still there to be able to go through and edit and make sure it looks good. And now this gets to the part about, you know, how ChatGPT will take your job. This was about how it took my job, but more generally, ChatGPT is going to take your job as well. And it's not gonna replace you, but it's just going to take more of those mundane, monotonous things or things that you just don't have energy to do. And it's going to come up with all of that. It can do the brainstorming for you. You can use it to do half of the brainstorming. You can use it to start off the brainstorming. However makes sense for you, you can use it however you need to. It will augment your work and very similar to people who don't know how to use Excel or people who don't know how to Google, pretty soon if you don't know how to use a AI tool or a plethora of AI tools, you're probably going to be left behind. As software engineers, we really do need to start embracing these tools because again, that bash script would have taken me 30 minutes to write, probably would have taken then two hours from the point that I needed to start working on it to the point that it was merged in to get it complete. But being able to complete it within five, 10 minutes, get a pull request up in that amount of time, merged in in about an hour, it just makes sense. So if you have any tips or tricks that you found that have worked out pretty well with using ChatGPT, both in your personal and your professional life, let me know. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. I'm sure other people would love to hear about it as well. And if you're looking for something else to watch, consider watching this video next. It was me trying to predict when AI would replace us as software engineers. Uh, I don't think I got it right, but I would be interested again. Go check out that video. Let me know how wrong or right I was. And that's it. That's the video.